What's up guys, Dr. Ben here. Let's do some Q&A. It is Thursday and we are going to be talking about whatever you guys wanna talk about. So pop those questions down be below. Let me give you some parameters here. Don't ask me uh, how much vitamin D should I take? Well, guess what? You need to get to 60 to 80. How much is that? I don't know. Everybody's different. You might be at 40, you might be at 20, and you gotta get it up to 60 to 80. Don't ask me how much zinc or um, some of those type of questions because that's an individual thing. Um, ask me things like, uh, what, what can I do to help my body do this? How can I help my body heal? Some of these different thoughts, that's what I wanna get into. And remember, when we see a question pop up and I, I go through it, think in the back of your mind, why is this person having this issue? Why are they dealing with MS? Why are they dealing with whatever is going on? Hey, Susan, great to see you. Um, so go ahead and uh, pop down below where you guys are watching from and uh, give us a thumbs up. We want to get some more people on here. Love getting uh, as many as we can and just going through these questions and giving you guys as much answers as feasibly possible. So we get... Uh, People all over the country, all over the world, from South Africa to Asia, uh, Montana down to Texas, everything in between. Um, so let's uh, let's jump in. Hey, Dan, I already already put one in there. So pop those questions down below, and I'll just go through. And if you're one of the top ones that puts it in first. I will be getting to that. So uh, put that down below. Let's get started with Deanna. Can an egg intolerance cause seizures? Um, you know, interesting question. Can like, is it a direct? I eat an egg and I get a seizure. I mean, if if that's what's happened in the body, I always say anything can cause anything. And when somebody comes back and they take a supplement that we've used a thousand times and never had an issue with they could have a reaction. Absolutely, it could happen. So could egg intolerance cause seizures? Yes, if you're seeing a direct, every time I eat an egg, I get a seizure, and no other times, absolutely. But is it just like, kind of like, uh, if, I, if I eat eggs, there's more seizures, but if I don't, maybe there's less? Mm, that's probably more of an inflammatory process, something that's pushing up over, over that baseline of, oh my gosh, now my body is going to rev up and actually have a seizure. So um, great question there. Jessica, having heart palpitations and acute insomnia um, meds have not helped. Labs normal, test normal, any ad advice there? All right, so Jessica, um, so acute insomnia and heart palpitations, those both sound like a brain thing where the brain is going into this hyperactive response. It's getting into uh, more of a fight or flight and what is causing that? So again, remember, labs look normal, I'm gonna say probably not because here's the deal. When you look at the lab range, it's way out here and it's that bell curve and they're going, well, 90% of the people in this country are healthy. Well, guess what? In a couple years, 50% of the population is going to be obese, not just overweight, but obese. So I guarantee you, and they try to make obesity sound like it's okay and it's a normal thing and all that, but obesity is not healthy. I can tell you right now, if we ran blood work on 1,000 people, 999 of them, would not have good blood work. So um, we narrow it down to what healthy people should be. So you've got to look from that perspective, from that range of healthy people as opposed to the average person. So um, the usually if somebody's having acute insomnia, if it just started, uh, it's usually more of a brain thing, a worry, an anxiety, some of those. So uh, I would get a brain map. That's the first place that I would start. Get a brain map done and see what that brainwave activity is doing. And it's probably high delta, high alpha, the sleep wave, and that um, excitatory wave, anxiety, worry, all of those things. But get a brain map done. Um, let me know where you're, uh, where you're watching from. All right, Susan, um, how can I get rid of yeast overgrowth? So depends where it is. If it's um, uh, like a systemic yeast thing, systemic candida, then you have to do dietary changes, um, you know, really low glycemic diets, low sugar, and uh, a lot of kill off that way. And if it's more in the intestinal tract, 
tract, similar idea, but yet your kill off has to be more targeted for the digestive tract. If it's toenails, if it's vaginal, some things like that, you can do topical, but just doing topical is not going to fix that. So you've got to do topical. That could be if it, yeah, vaginal yeast overgrowth, you can do suppositories, um, make your own, or there's some online. Uh, we can put a link down below, uh, Brittany, for full script on that one. Um, and there's some suppositories that are really helpful for that as well. Uh, tea tree oil, really good for toenail fungus, but you've got to change what's going on in the digestive tract. 98% of the time, there is a gut microbiome imbalance. Kill off the bad stuff, bring in the good stuff, and really make some changes in there. Um, great question. Um, Jane, what do you do with severe sciatic pain? Um, depends what's actually causing it. Is it a compression in the lumbar spine? If that's the case, then you need to traction, open up, take pressure off of that. Uh, that could be specific traction techniques. There's great offices out there that do that. That could be chiropractic adjustments. That could be dry needling, um, stem cell injections. One of my favorite things that you can do uh, for specific lumbar issues like that a lot of sciatic pain actually comes down um, from the uh, from the glute and the piriformis and so if it's not the lumbar but it's more the muscular uh, and pelvic issue then you would need to get into massage stretching yoga some other things along those lines so you've got to know why that sciatic pain is there and then you can take some massive action for it so again great having everybody on pop those questions down below live Q&A whatever you got throw it at me and and uh, if, uh, if the powers that be allow me to answer, hey, Cynthia, great to see you. If the powers to be let me answer, I will answer that question. Uh, let's go here. So go ahead and put those down below. Candy, um, how does this uh, treating remotely that you do work? I've called a few times over the last couple weeks and can't seem to get a hold of someone. Candy, great question. So um, you, if you're calling the Fort Collins office, you'll speak with Alicia. Uh, if you don't get a hold of her, uh, leave a message and she should return that call. She's swamped. We get calls from people all over the country and uh, she does her best to get back with people within 24 hours. Um, I'll, uh, I'll reach out to her. Brittany, can you send um, send Alicia a message about Candy there? But here's how this goes. Uh, we have patients from, from all over. Uh, they, they call in and if they can drive here, fly here, whatever, we, uh, we'll see that patient in office. We'll do the brain map, we'll do the blood work, and we'll do that new patient exam. And this is our way of throwing the net out there. And instead of that thing about fly fishing where you throw that one fly out, you're trying to catch that one trout and, oh, I got it. It was right behind that rock. That's more of what like a specialist does, what more is going to see that uh, GI doc, that neurologist, whatever. They're looking at like, what's that one thing that's going on in the thyroid or whatever it is. But what we do is we throw that net out and we say, okay, well, what, what's out of balance? And is it your liver? Is it your gut? Is it your brain? Is it your inflammatory process, cardiovascular, large intestine, small intestine, all these different things. We've got to throw that net out and whatever comes in, that's what we're going to be working on. Um, if someone can't get into the office, if they can't fly or because of COVID or whatever, uh, we can do those remotely. And so then we'll just sit down over Zoom, spend an hour and review case history, go through a bunch of the questionnaires, uh, look at, we can drop ship the blood work uh, all over the country and just really uh, start from that process wherever you are. So if that works in your guys' world, um, if you're close to Nashville, if you're close to the Fort Collins office, uh, you can go down that route. We're gonna be opening up our second office in, in Nashville in December and we're on track for uh, the Denver metro area in January. So uh, we'll be excited to expand to those what, 3 million people, whatever we have in Denver. So um, it'll be exciting to uh, get out and help more people. Um, Let's see what other questions. Susan Barnes, in the belly. Yes, yeah, so Susan, um, so the, the yeast overgrowth in the abdomen, you can't just take probiotics. You have to kill off the bad stuff and bring in the good stuff. So that's gonna be a huge part of this process is uh, taking oil of oregano. Um, Brittany, go ahead and link down full scripts that ADP, one of my favorite out there to do kill off, but then you've gotta bring back in uh, good bacteria and you may need to go through two or three rounds of that definitely can be a big part of it all right so keep asking questions we've got tons 
of information to get through Hillary. I have RA, I take omega and vitamin D, probiotic, CBD, turmeric, no meds. What else can I do for the inflammation? So remember, rheumatoid arthritis is not a joint disease. It's not even a joint inflammation disease. It's an autoimmune disease that's targeting and attacking your joints. So you can't out anti-inflammatory rheumatoid arthritis. I did a post this morning, I said, um, you know, th there's no food that's gonna heal the body, there's no supplement, no medication, nothing. The body heals itself. And that's what you've gotta start getting this thought process into is that yes, there is, and people are like, I beg to differ because foods, uh, foods can heal. And I'm like, here's the deal. No amount of kale is going to fix your rheumatoid arthritis. No amount of turmeric is going to fix your rheumatoid arthritis. Can your body calm itself down and can your body stop destroying its tissue? And can your body start healing those joints? Yes. How is it going to do that? Maybe eating some more kale, maybe taking some turmeric, but you've also got to take that step back. Anytime we're dealing with rheumatoid arthritis, we're thinking about this autoimmune reaction. Anybody with autoimmune, we have to look at adrenals, look at blood sugar, look at uh, chronic infections. Is your vitamin D up at 80? Do we have estrogenic imbalances. A lot of times it's after having a baby or something like that, that that immune system is going to get overwhelmed. Uh, is there environmental things? Do you live in a moldy house? Have you been exposed to chemicals? Uh, are you eating foods that are stimulating this autoimmune reaction? Is your brain on fight or flight? Go, go, go. That's what you need to figure out is what is the underlying why. Check out our, our YouTube channel, Functional Medicine Center Fort Collins, and you'll see lots of videos I've done. Just uh, search in there, autoimmune, and there's 30, 40, 50 minute long uh, seminars I've done on autoimmune, and it'll give you tons of information on what you can do for that. But we've got to start from the uh, ground floor there. Hey, Tina in Oklahoma, great to see you. Uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, Steve, great to see you. Thanks for jumping on, Nancy. Good to see you. Um, Eight-year-old has been having tonsil stones recently. Any recommendations? Um, so this is Angie. Great to see you. Uh, those tonsil stones, those are, those are some odd things, aren't they? You got to go in there and you got to like pick them out and it's uncomfortable and kind of gross and everything. So uh, with the tonsil stones and with that age, I would think about, okay, is there some type of underlying immune issue going on? Um, are we having some type of inflammatory process? And you know, I, I would run a full blood panel, even on an eight-year-old, and figure out which systems are out of balance because rarely is that you know just a, oh, it's just how they, they formed. Sometimes it happens, our oldest son, um, when he was developing his uh, his abdominal wall did not develop quite right and even at like a year old um, he was having a hernia where his intestines were going down in the scrotum and this I mean it just happened and and so occasionally things like that happen it wasn't from lifting something heavy it wasn't from you know eating the wrong food or whatever it's just how that abdominal wall formed maybe those tonsils just are um, uh, form that way and they're going to be able to, to uh, get these stones but I would take it one step further dig deeper in there um, before going and removing removing those tonsils all right Kathy uh, great to see you too out there in Scott's Bluff uh, so much hope heck yeah let's get you um, get that figured out I forgot to ask about um, ringing in the ears you know it depends Kathy on what that ringing in the ears is from so if it's from damage from uh, being around heavy machinery uh, firearms things like that Maybe not, but a lot of people, the ringing in the ears is actually a detoxification need. Um, the liver may not be doing what it needs to be doing, heavy metals, some things like that. So uh, yes, as we go through the healing process with you and give you those tools to get you your life back and that energy and everything that you want, we're going to be uh, seeing some major changes as well um, and potentially even in that, uh, in that ringing in the ears. But definitely look, if you've got ringing in the ears, tinnitus look for uh, anything that could be contributing to toxins heavy metals liver things like that uh, Donna great to see you long time no see uh, and 
All right, Candy can't get to Nashville. Um, that's okay. Just uh, um, send us a direct message, and we'll get you a hold of our new patient coordinator. And if Nashville is the your kind of regional hub there, we can get you in touch with them, and uh, we can drop ship that blood work, and then you just take it to your local. Right. Hopefully that. Um, let me know if uh, it's glitching out here a little bit. Um, our connection was fuzzy. What's a good remedy for chronic sinuses? My daughter has tried nasal sprays, Flonase, allergy shot, but still not feeling right. So a couple things. Remember everybody, what did we say? Ask the why. So why would somebody have chronic sinus issues in the first place? One of the most common things I see is that somebody's living in a house or a work setting with mold and that they're getting these mold spores and these mycotoxins settling into those sinuses and it's causing this recurrent uh, issue. So that's one of the first places that I would go with is uh, evaluating the house. If you've got any previous water damage, leaks, current leaks, current water issues, they have to be dealt with. And that means if you've had water damage in the basement and you can see that the drywall has a line on it where water went up and did that, you have to cut out six inches above that damaged area. You basically have to take out the infected area if the wood has damage, if the wood has rot, anything like that, that's going to continue. Any living surface like that is going to continue to uh, shoot out these spores and cause more problems. Um, if you have a, a spot in your ceiling and you paint it with kills and then it comes back, guess what? That water damage is on the other side of that drywall and it keeps coming back through. It's not that, oh good, we can just cover it up. You've got to figure out where that's coming from. So many people are having issues uh, with water damage and mold in their house. So start there and then um, you've got to figure out why that body is so close to this inflammatory immune response side of things. Yes, um, nasal sprays are going to be helpful, but one of the best things you can do is actually sinus irrigation, the Nelly Med, um, and you can put a touch of hydrogen peroxide, food grade hydrogen peroxide in there. That's the one where it'll spray the water up through the, the uh, nasal passage. You can do a neti pot. Some of those things would be one of the first places to start. I would also look at the gut and think about um, the digestive tract. If there's chronic uh, infection of any kind in that digestive tract, that can be a big part of it as well. Um, but yeah, just doing, um, doing sprays, anything like that, taking pills, not going to fix your sinus issues, especially if there's external things going on. So um, love having you guys on. Again, functional medicine, when we start thinking about this, it's the underlying why. So everything I'm, I'm responding to here today is getting to the underlying why, not just saying, ooh, take these three supplements and that's gonna fix your sinuses. Take these three supplements and that's gonna fix Nancy's acid reflux. That's not what we're uh, talking about here. It's let's get to the underlying why. Acid reflux is gonna be about a three or four minute conversation here because there's a lot that goes into it and there's not just the magic, ooh, take your um, slippery elm bark and that's going to fix your acid reflux. We've got to fix the why that somebody has acid reflux. So acid reflux is where there's uh, too much stomach acid escaping through that valve, that sphincter between the esophagus and stomach. It gets up into uh, that, that tube into your esophagus, causes burning, can all come all the way up and feel like it's in your throat. It can be a pretty yucky thing. But think about this. That valve should open and close like it's supposed to at the right time, but it can uh, be stuck open or it can be pushed up on, and this is the most common thing. So there's two things that we think about. Hiatal hernia is where that sphincter gets stuck up in the diaphragm, and your diaphragm is that muscle that helps you breathe. And it can get stuck in there and uh, it may not open and close appropriately. If that happens, then you need to find somebody local that does uh, body work and can, and you want to ask them to adjust your hiatal hernia. Basically, you're pulling that sphincter out of the diaphragm, and so call or email certain places and ask if they can adjust the hiatal hernia. Um, chiropractor, massage therapist, physical therapist, different people that do um, do work on the abdominal cavity can do that adjustment. 
adjustment. So that's one of the first places to go. Um, but then you think about, well, where does that come from? It's usually the diaphragm's not right, so you've got to work on your breathing techniques and slow down your breathing. Um, you're probably shallow breathing, quick breathing through there. Uh, C3, 4, and 5 in the neck, those stimulate the diaphragm, so sometimes there's a neck issue. If you've had whiplash, hernias, things like that, that can affect the diaphragm, so you've got to get your neck worked on as well. So it, if it's a structural thing, you've got to get those fixed. And then the other side is going to be more of the metabolic um, with that stomach acid. And as we age and as we're under stress, Nancy, are you doing in either of those? Are you getting older or are you stressing? Um, if you have either of those going on, your body produces less stomach acid than more. So think about that. Most people are like, oh, I need a, an acid. I need an acid reducing thing. But get this, the vast majority of people that have reflux, indigestion, heartburn, any of that stuff are already deficient in stomach acid. And then you put less down. The other day we talked about even COVID and viruses and that your stomach acid is a huge part of fighting off these infections. But most people, probably 90 plus percent of the population, has deficient stomach acid. So then here's what happens. The food sits in the stomach, it starts to gurgle, ferment, sit there, it starts pushing up on that sphincter, and we're going to start getting regurgitation. And what does that mean? Well, it's going to start refluxing, we're going to start getting it pushing back up into the throat. So our goal is to actually have more stomach acid so that food passes through quickly out of the stomach, doesn't push up on that sphincter, and you can actually have less stomach acid. How do you do that? Well, you don't drink fluids with your meals. So if you're drinking fluids with your meals, you are going to be uh, diluting your stomach acid. pH of seven for water, pH of two and a half for stomach acid, pour water on your fire, put the fire out. So no liquids with your meals, and you've got to eat in a relaxed environment. You can fight or flight, or you can rest and digest, but you can't do both at the same time. So if you're in a go, 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 eating at your desk, eating through a phone call, whatever it is, you're not gonna be digesting like you need to, not producing the stomach acid, and it's gonna regurgitate in there. Yes, you can do some things like slippery elm. Uh, you can do, there's a, a specific type of zinc that can be helpful, some different things that can soothe it while you are making these changes, but there's no amount of gut healing powder or pill or whatever that's going to fix this. There's no amount of uh, medication that's gonna fix this. Just like my post this morning, Food won't heal this, supplements won't heal this, medication won't heal this, but your body can heal your acid reflux. So you've got to get to the why. Yes, we will do things to help with that healing process, but that is not gonna fix it. No amount of kale, no amount of slippery elm bark is going to fix your acid reflux. You've got to get to the why. So told you that was gonna be about three or four minutes, sorry. Hey, Gina, great to see you and um, Cindy, great to see you. Um, where can you get proper blood work done? So Jen, depends where you live. If you're in the um, any of the regions close to uh, Colorado or Tennessee, we can do blood work there. If you'd like to work with either of the offices, um, you know, even remotely, we can drop ship blood work to you. And so the, this blood work that we look at, it'd be about $3,000 if you just walked into the regular lab. We get it for about $200, which is a bargain compared to if somebody just walked in off the street to a lab. And so not only are we throwing that net really wide in inflammation, hormones, liver, full thyroid, Hashimoto's, all these different things, but then we take a step back and we say, okay, let's narrow it down to the healthy range, and all of our doctors are trained in looking at it from that perspective. Um, 50,000 vitamin D, okay to take for breastfeeding moms. So Kim, again, um, you, you, know, uh, you know me and I can't recommend specifics, especially for breastfeeding, um, but you know, for most people, if they did 50,000 um, IU of vitamin D for three days, that's a great jump start for that immune system. So obviously no one needs to be taking 50,000 of vitamin D long term, but short term for three days, if they feel like they're coming down with something, Thing, absolutely. So um, if you if you need to, Kim, send me a DM and we can talk more about that. And um, Deborah CRP elevated 23, how to bring that number down. Here we go again. Is there 
X amount of kale that you need to eat to get that CRP down. No. X amount of turmeric that you need to take to get that CRP down. No. You need to get to the why of why your CRP is up. So, Deborah, do you have autoimmune conditions? You need to check your rheumatoid factor. You need to check your ANA, uh, CCCP, some of these different markers for um, autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, some of those things. If it's not that, then nine times out of ten, it's going to be your blood sugar is going Going too high and just like my book I wrote um, uh, Brittany can put a link on that one as well blood sugar doesn't lie um, if your blood sugar goes up too high it is going to be contributing to inflammation in the body but guess what that CRP can come down and it can come down very quickly I've seen many other reasons for this maybe you've got uh, you know debilitating degeneration in your knee um, I had a lady have her uh, her second um, shot and went from four on her CRP up to 38. Uh, so there, a lot of things can contribute to these inflammatory markers. And, uh, and yet it's a big red flag that you've got some major, major inflammation in the body, but that CRP could come down from 23 down to three within three months. It can change very, very quickly if you figure out the why. But let me know, um, let me know what your blood sugar is doing there and I'll give you some more information. Um, <clears throat> some things I can do for vertigo. Um, not sure if we have mold issue, but lots of rain this year. Worst case I ever had. Uh, so this is candy. Yeah, so vertigo, um, you know, could be multiple things. Could be the crystals in the ears, and they've got to uh, do the Epley maneuver where you reset those crystals. It could be the upper cervical is out, and you need a, um, a, an adjustment. Look for somebody that specializes in just C1 adjustments. Um, that can be a big part of it. Uh, it could be sinuses. It could be that pressure from those ears. Uh, look for someone that does something called a nasal spray. Specific. That's where they stick a balloon up the nose and we actually inflate it and adjust those cranial bones from the inside out. Um, uh, and then if you need support on figuring out if you have mold in the house, DM us and we can get you in touch with some people um, depending on where you live as far as looking at that house. Uh, but yeah, a lot of times they're structural. Um, Yes, what would you recommend for someone who gets frequent cold sores? Good to see you there, uh, Cynthia. So um, frequent cold sores, think about that. It's probably a viral thing. It's probably a chronic viral thing. It's kind of like my patient that had shingles 13 times by the time she was 27, or a lot of other people that have chronic viral Epstein-Barr, all types of things. Um, that's gonna be that herpes probably, if that's the type of cold sore we're talking about. You've got to get them to support their immune system build up that, that system so that it can fight off pretty much anything that's coming at it. So that's a huge part of the process is figuring out, okay, which systems are inflamed? Why is the immune system down? Is it a chronic viral? Can you take some lysine and NAC and some of these different things to kill it off? Is their blood sugar going out of balance? Is their, um, their microbiome off, which does a huge part of that immune system? So it's usually a chronic immune issue. Go ahead and keep asking those questions, guys. I've got about five more minutes. How can I get my taste and smell back faster? Um, are we talking post-COVID? Uh, that, that's an interesting one. I've seen some people it come back really fast. I've seen other people it takes a while um, for that to come back. But I would do some high-dose zinc, uh, even 75 to 100 millig milligrams per day. Uh, but then I would also run a full blood panel and just see what else is going on. Because odds are that's not the only thing that's out of balance. Um, many times other, other viruses, other immune issues, inflammatory issues have come back. So uh, keep your eye on that. And let's see what else we have. How to help skin issues, um, skin reactions due to do reaction to mess, how to burn heal, but continue to have issues. Um, so 
I don't quite get what you're asking there, Sandra. Um, so sounds like the burn, but you're still having skin reactions there. Um, obviously, topical things you can do. Uh, there's tons of natural creams and salves and all types of things like that. Uh, but if it's turning into some type of eczema or any issue along those lines, look to the gut. Most people, if they're having skin issues, so the first first two things, if, if somebody is having skin issues, whether that's acne, um, psoriasis, eczema, anything like that first one is it's probably the gut second it could be hormones and I'll see if you're a 40 something year old female that's starting to have acne on your back or face or anything it's usually a hormone issue as well but the, very commonly it is a digestive tract issue it's that microbiome is out of balance so if you see a kid with eczema if you start getting eczema in your 20s or 30s or 40s or whatever it is look to the gut first we're gonna have to uh, kill off rebuild that gut lining, bring in the good stuff, do a lot of different changes through there. So that's going to be a huge part of it. You got to keep working on that. Um, can a COVID antibody test determine the difference between vaccine and natural immunity? Yes. So if, if you do a um, COVID antibody test looking for the um, IgG, IgM, IgA antibodies, uh, you, we're going to be able to see if it's looking specifically for the, for the natural immunity, we can see that. Um, uh, Nicole, our nasal sprays with xylitol, okay. We've talked about this uh, a couple times over the last few weeks. The xylitol nasal sprays, you can do uh, food grade hydrogen peroxide, some different things in that nasal spray. So if you go out to the grocery store or you're at school and you're a teacher and everybody's sneezing, flu, cold, COVID, whatever it is, yes, those sprays are gonna be great because that mucous membranes is going to be a big part of the immune system and we're going to be trapping those and if the, the viruses get or bacteria get through that, then it's going to have to rely on that immune system. So that's one of our first lines of offense. So that uh, defense, that's great. Um, and uh, Brittany will put in a link for that. Michelle, I wore glasses years ago, then stopped working to raise my son and my vision improve. I went back to work years later. Um, I'm guessing, Michelle, that you're saying that the vision is getting worse again. So if you're on the computer all day, absolutely that can throw off, off your vision. Um, you need to be working your vision, um, meaning that uh, you know, look and, and, and look for things long distance and then um, look for things close up. It's kind of like ex there's a lot of eye exercises out there. If you're on the computer all the time looking up close, you need to challenge your vision and you know, look across the street. I'm looking out the window and looking at that house looking at these trees and then I bring it back and I can I can look up close and then and work through there there's uh, just Google some eye exercises and there's some things that definitely can be helpful in there and let's see what else any other questions you guys have pop those down below here hey Eric good to see you and um, is uh, are the gut muscles uh, on the sciatic nerve? No, Jane, the gut muscles, the, that peristalsis is the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve comes off the brainstem, stimulates our gag reflex, heart and lungs. It's the one that if you see blood and you pass out, that's a big part of it. Um, so vagus nerve is going to stimulate that peristalsis. That's why during our exam, we check for a gag reflex. And if there's no gag reflex, they're not going to be moving that digestive tract through. So if you're not having daily bowel movements, look up vagal nerve exercises. Very good chance that uh, it is a vagus nerve issue and there's things that, that can be done to help with that one. So I wouldn't be surprised if you're not going every day like you need to. And let me cruise through here, see if there's any other questions. Otherwise, I'm going to have to jump. Um, uh, how do you reduce moderate GGT levels? So first thing, Sherry, here, here, I know all you guys are out there saying this, you know, why, why is the GGT high? GGT is fatty liver. If you're drinking six beers a night, don't drink six beers a night. Pretty easy there. But 90% of the people that have high GGT, it is fatty liver from blood sugar imbalances. I almost guarantee your ferritin is high, your triglycerides are high. If you uh, tested your blood work non-fasting, your insulin would be high, your A1C is probably creeping up, um, your blood sugar is going up. This is a blood sugar problem that you're having, Sherry. It can be reversed very, very quickly, but it is precursor to diabetes. It's precursor to lots of other issues. You've got to get that fixed very, very quickly. So uh, it's one of those uh, markers that every single one of you, next blood work that you get, have them check GGT and 20, 20 is the cutoff. 
Um, Rob, I'm at 55 is okay to add additional zinc C and D to my daily vitamin um, intake. Yeah, I mean, zinc, zinc C and vitamin D. Um, our, uh, our hero, Dr. Fauci, he, uh, uh, he takes C and D. He talked about that 10 years ago uh, in an article that he takes those every day. Um, hey, Abe. Um, great job. Glad you're, you're making some great changes there, buddy. Uh, we got that. And I take a one a day multivitamin. So, um, Robin, a one a day is not going to be enough. Brittany's going to um, post some links to some really good quality supplements that you can use uh, that we use with our patients every single day. And maybe I have time for. Uh, had COVID in, COVID in February, had an antibody test, and was told it was negative. How? You know, it, it, some people's antibodies are going to fade sooner than others. Depends how old you are. Uh, some, you know, somebody's over 60 or 70, their antibodies are going to go down a lot quicker. Uh, but you probably have some T cells, you probably have some memory cells that are going to jump up a whole lot quicker and make some really good changes there. So... Um, all right, guys, I am going to have to jump. If there's any more questions I didn't get to, we'll be answering those throughout the day. So uh, thanks for jumping on every Thursday, 830 Mountain Standard Time. Um, share this with anybody that you know that is having health issues that just needs that inspiration to take control of their health again because there's so many things that we can do besides just taking a supplement, besides just going on the magic diet or taking a medication or whatever. We've got to get to that underlying why, and we're going to be able to get them dialed. In. Great seeing you guys. Stay strong. Your immune system works. Give it the tools to fight everything off that it needs to. Be well.